prestige are a pawnbroker's with a difference. Wow, we. You've got in excess of £300,000. <gasps> Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, art, almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. And in affluent Surrey. Sparkles, wow. Asset rich clients are everywhere. It's fairly bling, isn't it? <laughs> If it glitters... Probably worth more than my house. If it roars... Whoa. There's money to be made. This sort of thing could be worth a quarter of a million quid. <laughs> this time... She's motoring along now. Tricky decisions... It is difficult when you're dealing with mates because you don't want to disappoint them. Unusual items... I've never seen a rat with a ruby in his bum. And there are high stakes for some. That's not going to work. I'm scared, in case they say no. Welcome to the world. <laughs> Of posh porn. Pawnbrokers have been operating for 4,000 years since the ancient Greeks. Oh my lord. I'm thinking of selling or pawning the string. Oh, that's what we like to hear. Pawnbroking is very easy. It's the second oldest profession. Do you know what sort of money you're looking for? Thousands. <laughs> Bring in an asset, we value it, and we lend you a percentage of the value. It's that easy. Bloody Nora. Pawn shops are now more popular than ever, but this is a store that's doing things differently. You're looking for 1.75 million. Set up five years ago, the pawn shop is the creation of businessman James Constantino. There's pawnbrokers popping up all over the country, but what's different about Prestige is we're doing high-end loans against luxury items. James leads a team of specialist pawnbrokers who can arrange deals on anything and everything. Have a look at that. <gasps> from high-end jewellery to luxury yachts. This is what it's all about. Oh, my word. What? Each member of the team had their specialist areas. This is like a Ferrari for watches. I promise you, it's not me. Joe is my PA and operations manager, and if there's anything needs fixing, Joe sorts it out. You could have been a little bit less selfish if you had to work on anything. More bags for Patrick. Patrick doesn't like being referred to as the bag man, but basically that's what he is. Wow, that's a piece, isn't it? But Lawrence is a bit of an institution. And he loves history. So, what do you think of that? Um, I think you look bloody ridiculous in that. And boss James's forte... Oh, I'm loving that. ..is dealing with luxury cars. Hey! Hello, Prestige. Clients looking to sell or get a loan against their belongings either bring them in... Good afternoon. Hi. Got some jewellery for me. Sorry? ..or call or email ahead. This is quite interesting, j -Mo. We'll have to get a bring in and have a look at that. Today, James has received an email inquiry about one of his favourite passions, vintage cars. A 1968 Jag's coming. That's beautiful, look at that. I can just imagine me sitting in there, you bring me out a cup of tea, some sandwiches in the back. <laughs> Can't I just be at the front with a nice little bag? These classic Jags are quite saleable if they're in really good order and they've got good provenance and good history. This one certainly looks great in the pictures, but it's going to be down to the inspection to see exactly uh, what restoration work's been done and at what level. Beautiful, isn't it? It is lovely Beautiful. looking, I have to say, yeah. Like really that? nice, yeah, I do. So, Kane, if you just do the bush... The owner of the Jag is Tracy, single mum to two children, Maya and Kane. Maya's just a lovely little girl that just loves to play. And my son, he's great, <laughs> and he looks after Maya. Are you well, Maya? Look how much that sweet girl! Isn't that amazing? Tracy used to manage her husband's health practice that treated patients from all over the world. Dealt with anything from depression to spinal cord injury and brain injury. When people were told that they would never walk again and suddenly they're moving their limbs and they're able to stand up again, that's a bit of a revelation. But four years ago, life changed immeasurably for Tracy and her family. My husband passed away in 2010. Uh, very suddenly, he had a heart attack at home. He literally fell out of the chair. My son was there as well, and we called the ambulance 999. But I knew he was already gone. In the middle of dealing with her grief, Tracy had to close their business. I had lost everything. I'd lost my home, I'd lost my business, I'd lost my husband. What was to become of me? Making a fresh start, Tracy moved to be close to her family. <laughs> we couldn't stay in the house after everything had happened. Okay, hot chocolates with marshmallows. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. 
I felt like I needed to ground myself again. Oh, you got the pictures out. Four years on, Tracy has managed to rebuild her life and now has plans to buy a dream home in Croatia. The plan for the house is to renovate it and then I'll use it as a holiday home. I like that church. So pretty, isn't it? And where the house is, you can hear the church bells. It's about 200 metres from the sea. It's just beautiful, it's got character. I see what it can be like and it, I think it can be lovely. In order to pay the £10,000 deposit for the house, Tracy wants to sell her late husband's Jaguar Mark II. We've had it for 15 years and it was my husband's pride and joy, really, because my son grew up with the car. We decided not to let it go after he passed away. The family have fond memories of the Jag, especially those involving son Kane. He'd have a little steering wheel next to my husband. It was so cute. And they'd both be driving in the Jaguar. After much soul searching, Tracy has decided that the time is right to say goodbye to the car. I'm going to have to sell the beloved Jaguar, which is a bit of a wrench, but it has to be done. The pawn shop are having the car picked up so they can assess and value it. Oh, I think they might be here. Are we ready for this, guys? Hello, nice to meet you. Collect your uh, jacket, Mac. We've kept it for sentimental reasons. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Are you all right? Yeah. What can we do? And we have to move on, so it's time to sell the car. It's the last chance to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, bless you. Although of sentimental value to Tracy, will James be able to share her passion for the Jag and offer her the money she desperately needs? The pawn shop has two sites in Weybridge and Richmond. Good afternoon, Prestige. And with business booming, James is now moving the headquarters to Hatton Garden in the heart of London's famous jewellery quarter. We're close to the city, close to the West End, and there's a lot of high-end assets here, and we think the store's going to do really well. Jo is going through CVs as she and James are on the hunt for specialist pawnbrokers. Already made one interview for tomorrow. I've spoken to a second. But finding new employees who can deal with the broad range of items the company looks at is no easy task. It's really difficult to get people to come in here and say, look, Thursday, I want you going down and have a look at this helicopter that's landing down at Fair Oaks. I mean, it's a ridiculous thing to ask someone. We want to get the right people on board with the right skills. Oh, God. As well as hiring new staff, Joe's overseeing the build and shop fitting of the new store. All this crap is not meant to be here because I've got desks arriving. I didn't realise all this stuff was in here. Having to split her time between the sites, Joe is really feeling the pressure. That can't be left like that. It's a disaster. While trying to get this shop open and to have everything in place, order stationery, to have counters fitted, deal with the trades, and I'm still trying to do my normal job. Yeah, but what about all this metal? There's a lot of pressures with opening a new store. We spent an absolute fortune in kitting it out. It's crap. We must recoup some of that money. I expected the whole of this floor to be clear. The deadline to the opening is looming. It is really stressful and very exhausting. The majority of customers are pawning their items for the very first time. Oh, nice watch. But James does have some regular clients. Oh, yeah. I've been speaking to James. And this latest inquiry is from a close friend. Have you seen this? No. Boat's coming. It's incredible. It looks like an amazing thing, doesn't it? What does he want to do? Loan against it, then? He wants the loan, yeah. When it's based you... out in Spain. We're going to take it out, take it out to sea. Wait a minute, when are you going to go? Tomorrow. Well, I hope he's serious, not a blooming time waster. Well, it's Mark, he's a regular, he's a client of ours, so I'm sure he will be serious. And it's a lovely looking thing and it could be a big one. I'm no, taking in about 20,000 deliveries on my own tomorrow, interviewing about five people. That is not convenient to the business. I'll give you my passport if you can put the flights up. You book your own flight. Anyone fit as your PA the way you carry on? And I'm not happy about it, so I'm not booking it and making it any easier for you. Drawing James's attention away from the new store is this 18-metre nine-berth yacht. It's owned by his friend and client, businessman Mark. I'm an entrepreneur. I have no education. 
I don't have any GCSEs or um, A-levels. Oh, hi, sweetheart. That looks refreshing. Is that for me? That's for you, darling. I have three boats over here, a few houses, and a number of cars. And this is what I enjoy. Money brings contentment. Mark moved his life to southern Spain four years ago. I probably am living a very nice dream, but I do work very hard over here. Mark has built up a transport business and is now branching out, looking to charter his luxury yachts. Recently, I have bought a boat, which I have spent quite a lot of money in doing it up. That needs washing off. Obviously, the carpenters have been. Once finished, Mark is convinced the luxury yacht will attract very wealthy customers. Tickets, please. The boat, which I'm going to be chartering, can charge £6,000 a week. And I have the next three months from November uh, booked up fully. Over here, could we just squirt where they've painted? Because I want this right for James tomorrow. Yep. I need a short-term loan for a period of probably two months. I'm hoping that James will lend me up to £100,000. Mark needs 30000 to finish upgrading the yacht and 70000 for his transport company. I need to buy some new lorries. It's a lot of money, so can he persuade his friend James he's good for it? Let's see if this engine starts. is probably the poshest pawn shop in Britain. I don't live that lifestyle anymore, sadly. Came in today's post. It's from an owl. Ooh, she's probably your new best friend. An owl isn't man, actually. Huh? Jesus. I mean, how much are you looking for? Every week, hundreds of clients approach James and his team looking for loans against an array of high-end goods. The Gucci bag. And they never know what could be coming through their door next. They're all gold coins. 87 million. 87 million, 690,000. It's lunchtime in Weybridge, and watch expert J-Mo's manning the front desk. Hi, there. Hello. How can We've I help? We've just got um, a couple of bits of statues that we wanted to show you. Some statues? Black coral. How, how big are they? Uh, well, they're in the car. <laughs> oh, they're in there? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, like this, they yeah. grow, they take about 4,000 years to grow. What are they then? Black coral. One is a. Oh, female. no, hang on, I'll come to you. The coral? The black coral, it's a, f it's a quite man's. It's unusual, isn't it? A man's torso yeah. and a female. Well, he's quite fit, isn't he? I wish I had that yeah. female figure. It's a natural form of black coral. Black coral. And that's of the Caribbean, the Cuba. The Caribbean. Yeah. Of the Cuba, Cuba. Cuban yeah. shorts. Okay. Yeah. When Anita and her husband popped in, and they produced the coral. I was like, ah, I've never seen anything like that before. They're quite something, aren't they? They're an inheritance. So oh, my husband they? inherited them from great great grandfather, and he carved them himself. So. You want to sell them or yeah. loan against them? Or we something? want to get a valuation. Yes. Um, because we raise some money, um, and then we take it forward from there. Okay. Yeah. We were told they're very expensive and rare. Fine. All right. And you've got a figure in mind you want to sort of raise against the pieces? You know, Half you... a million. No, don't, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really need to. We've been told that it was valued about five thousand per inch. This is quite a, an unusual inquiry. This is not something we tend to take in every day. We'll start talking to our experts and then we'll take it from there. That's brilliant. In Kent, Anita and her husband Henry are hoping this family heirloom will be the answer to their prayers. Yeah, but it's all right. It's lettuce and cabbage, which you normally have. Living in a one bedroom house is tough for the family. We actually sleep on mattresses upstairs in the living room. We each have one each. Um, and then we just bring them down here at the end of the day, in the mornings, so that we can keep it tidy, because it says it's our living, sleeping space upstairs. I don't want to be in this situation, and I think our son deserves better, and we feel as parents that we want to give him better. So that's the whole idea with the coral, and hopefully that will open some doors for us. You can get that for only 15,000. That space? That is space. And the beach is there. And the beach is there. Anita and Henry are hoping to use the money from the coral to start a new life in Cuba. God, ideally, we'd love for 50, 60,000 pounds and we can move on and just do everything and everything that we decided and our dreams will come true. Well, this is a beautiful home. 50,000 in Cuba, you're a millionaire. So, but, you know, realistically, we're looking at the minimum of five to ten. The dream home is a nice three bedroom, four bedroom, detached in the Caribbean. <laughs> Relax and enjoy the life. 
Yeah. Just we'll have to wait and see. James and his team are used to dealing with unusual items, but the black coral statues are causing a real stir. I've personally never dealt with anything like this before. Uh, we've got two pieces of coral. And you can see this is like a mermaid kind of style. Coral. Mm. Things people do when they get bored. Yeah. We're certainly not experts in everything we see, and sometimes something comes in that stumps us, and that was certainly the case with the coral. For every inch of coral, it could be worth £5,000. We can work out the maths there. It doesn't do anything for me. I can't get it. Well, five grand an inch, what's all that about? The only thing that interests me is the interest that I would get. Whilst Anita and Henry are looking to pawn their treasured coral, this Jaguar Mark II is up for sale. After the premature death of her husband four years ago, single mum Tracy is now hoping to sell his beloved car in an effort to move on with her life. This is like the crossroads that I've reached now. I need the money for a down payment for um, a house that I want in Croatia. <laughs> and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get the money to be able to do what I need to do. And I'm scared in case they say no. <laughs> And when I first heard of Tracy's story and what she'd been through of recent years, I really, really did feel for her. And I was absolutely hoping and praying that that Jaguar would be worth the 10 grand she needed. But James can't allow emotion to cloud his judgment, so has taken Tracy's car to be independently valued. Yeah, I'm really excited. They're a pretty iconic vehicle. We've got an expert in what he doesn't know about Jags isn't worth knowing. His client's looking for 10 grand, and uh, let's see just how much this car's worth. Robert, how are you? Hi, James. Nice to see you. And you, mate. And you. Uh, what do you think, then? I like the car. It's got a lot of points in its favour, and somebody has loved it dearly, and it's a very visually appealing car, or at least it could be. However, frankly, it's been a little neglected in recent times. Yeah, that would fit with what the client told me, because I think it's been stood for about three years. OK. The main thing, actually, is the chrome work. Whoever chromed these bumpers did a particularly poor job. I would probably just take these off and have them re-chromed. You've got a little bit of micro-blistering, which is caused when the car was painted, there was a little bit of dampness. Yeah. In terms of its desirability, is it a goer or should I steer clear? It's actually a very un or relatively unusual car because this was produced in the last year of production. A year before they finished, Jaguar cut back on the quality of the cars, but in the enthusiast market, the later cars actually drive better, and you know the appeal for Mark II Jaguars is very, very strong. OK, well, that gives me some sort of indication. I shall get back to the client and relay the news to her. Thanks for your time. Thanks Thank for coming to see me today. Thank Cheers. Thanks. OK, bye. It's a good, solid, sound vehicle. Just needs a bit of TLC, and I'm hoping that we can present the client with a good enough figure to get a deal done. But will his enthusiasm translate into enough cash for Tracy's dream holiday cottage? Cars may be James's favourite items to deal with, but they're not the most lucrative part of the business. Jewellery for us is bread and butter. We see it every day. Oh, bloody hell. That'll sell well, that one. Mm. Hi, how can I help? I've got some jewellery here that my mother left passed away. Oh, we can assess that for you, yeah. We tend to get diamonds, gold, emeralds, but occasionally we get some really unusual items. Over at the Richmond branch, watch and jewellery expert Monica has received an email about a very unusual pendant. It's a rat by Cartier. Yeah, that looks definitely like sapphires. I think it's a ruby in his palm, but we've seen a rat with a ruby in his palm. It looks nice if you want to have a gold rat. It was bought and commissioned from Cartier. I mean, would you buy a rat? Would you? The current owner of the golden rat is hopeless romantic 56-year-old Joe. No right. From Barnsley in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> the apple of her eye is Eddie. My partner, Eddie, means the world to me and always has from day one of meeting him. The story of how Jo came by the Golden Rat started when she first set eyes on Artificionado Eddie. <gasps> That's in France. All those buildings, he'll have gone out and painted them. 
Eddie owned these paintings by 20th century artist Sir William Russell Flint, most of which feature his famous muse, the beautiful Cecilia Green, who owned the golden rat pendant. I wanted to impress him and I thought what better way than get in touch with his favourite uh, model in the picture. And more than a reply, I got a telephone call telling me how excited Cecilia was to receive a letter. Joe and Cecilia went on to become firm friends. Cecilia, she was like a second mum to me. Sadly, Cecilia died in 2003 at the age of 72. To Joe's surprise, she left a small token of her affection in her will. This is where I keep it, in my knicker drawer. Here he is. The ruby up his bottom is so Cecilia, and I wish you were here now for her to tell me more about it. That's the one upsetting part, that I can't ask the questions that I want to ask. Joe now wants to sell the pendant to raise funds for another romantic gesture. And as nice as this. We thought eternity rings would do what they say on the can, we would be eternally linked. But can the golden rat play a role in Eddie and Joe's future? I'd have to get £2,000 for it. We shared the friendship, we've shared the pleasure of the pictures. It just seems right and fitting to me that we share the rat. Joe and Eddie have travelled down to Surrey to get the pendant valued. Hello. Oh, the rat. The rat. Oh, it's no, finally it's time for Monica to see the rat up close. Nice. When I first saw the golden rat pendant, I was like, what is this? <laughs> Why would you have a golden rat from Cartier? Would you like to sell it or take a loan on it? Or I think we'd like to sell it because we've decided to get some eternity rings, haven't we? What sort of money you were thinking? Well, it's £2,000. Yeah. We'll find a good home for him. The main thing about the golden rat, it's made by Cartier, it's signed by Cartier. That always adds the value, otherwise it would be just a golden rat. It will be really exciting to find out about it. So we'll just wait and see what Monica can find out for us, basically. But even with provenance, will the rat have enough appeal to raise the money Joe and Eddie are looking for? Would you yeah. wear it? No. Why not? Because it's a rat. is the millionaire county of Britain, the ideal setting for a pawnbroker's carving out a niche at the high end of the market. I've got a few watches from my footballing days. Overall, you're looking at in excess of sort of 80 to 100,000 pounds. But things are about to change for owner James. He's decided to branch out and open a new store in London's Hatton Garden. D-Day is fast approaching, but while the shop fitting is going reasonably well... This is James, this is Francesco. How are you doing? Hey, Francesco. How are you? Recruiting extra staff is a different story. Do you know much about what Prestige do? Uh, Us, this company? Uh, no, actually not a lot. There's nothing worse than doing an interview with someone who doesn't understand pawnbroking and exactly what we require in terms of their knowledge of jewellery, watches and gold. We're after a manager and an assistant manager at Hatton Garden that would have knowledge on jewellery, diamonds, gemstones. I don't really like jewellery. He really dislikes anybody that has a lack of interest and has very little knowledge. Thanks very much. See you later. Yeah. With four new members of staff needed, operations manager Jo has decided a blitz is necessary and has her battle plan worked out. What I was going to ask the basics first. You can then ask what you want. Yeah, because I've only got that. <laughs> well, I thought as much. <laughs> Despite the urgency, Joe's still keen to take the time to find out what makes each candidate tick. And what makes you really happy? My friends, my family. What does stress you out? My mum. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's a very good one. James and I are completely different when it comes to interviews. I want to make sure they fit in with the team and that they're an overall good person. James just wants to know that they're going to make him money. If someone brought in to you a diamond ring, how would you know the market trade value or the 
product or retail value? With, I think with 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 um, diamonds in particular, I can make a guess that's pretty accurate. After carrying out some of the interviews, I found out that just how difficult it was to find really good staff, and I really realised just how lucky I was with the people I had on board. I'm not like, oh my God, we really need that person yet. James's current staff are all experienced pawnbrokers. I mean, it's been hallmarked 1904. But some of the valuables that come into the shop will always need a specialist evaluation. Absolute pure art deco. For JMO, the black coral figures are just such an item. Owners Anita and Henry are hoping their family heirloom will fund a move to Cuba. They, they're wanting a loan of up to about five to ten thousand pounds, but they they believe that the coral they could be worth forty thousand pounds. The question marks are really who can pin down the value and how can we clarify that before we can offer a loan? Because we don't want to get stung. Oh, good morning. Hi, I'm Jamo's taking the statues to auctioneer Alex. They're quite unusual. Do you think they are coral? You can actually look at the structure of it yeah. and the veins through it so you can see that it's a natural substance. It's, it's not something you see so much of. You see a lot of the white coral and, of course, mm. the red coral. It doesn't mature until over 50 years, so obviously a large piece like that could be, could be many hundreds of years old. Yes. So being organic, yeah. should there be some sort of certes with it or some sort of certificate? It is governed under the CITES regulations. Oh. You can sell it and you can export it with a licence. So it's, it's governed but not so heavily as, for example, ivory. Is there any idea of value, do you think? You know, because well, it's, it, it is rare, I guess, in some ways. It appears to be very it? rare. Yeah. I've not seen anything like this, I must admit, in this sort of very sort of naturalistic uh, state. Mm. So mostly it's very highly polished and very smooth outline. So it, it is slightly unusual in that aspect. Now, our customers believe that it um, could be as much as £5,000 an inch. They are slightly more unusual. They're more unusually carved. Uh, so they may be worth a lot more, um, but that, of course, is the $60 million question. With alarm bells ringing, JMO heads back to the office. I wasn't aware that coral is quite strictly uh, governed and you do need certain certificates and licences. Over at Richmond, Monica has been struggling to find any provenance for Joe and Eddie's rat pendant. How many people can call cars here? at half past two. But keen to pin down a value, she's visiting jewellery expert and Cartier collector, Matt. Hi, Hi. Matt, how are you? Um, I came to show you something. I would like to know what your thoughts are about it. It's a rat. It's a Cartier rat, <laughs> but it's a rat. <laughs> it looks like it's 18 karat. Um, you've got rubies and a collar and also sapphires in its eyes. Yeah, check his bum. <laughs> I did see that. It's unusual, isn't it? Is. It doesn't have any hallmark, so... Yeah. Um... So it obviously wasn't made in England. It's nice and heavy. So, yeah, there's value there in, in just its metal weight alone. Um, would it sell to the right person? I think it would. It is a, definitely a unique piece. You know, you're not going to see a, a No, I've never seen, I mean, so many phone. years, and I've yeah. never seen a rat, a Cartier rat. Thanks for welcome. having Thanks. Have a good day. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> from Surrey to sunny Spain. Yeah, I'm here. Boss yeah. James is making a flying visit to see his client and friend Mark, who is looking to raise £100,000 against the value of his yacht. You've got to be careful when you get close to clients or you're on a friendly basis with them. It can be a little bit tricky because you, you want to do your best for them, but you don't want it to be a favour. I really want to play it by the book and present him with the right figure as if he was just another punter. Howdy, James. Mark, how are you? Very well. Welcome the board. Oh, very nice. Very nice. You're all right. Nice to see you. Good see to you see nice. You. You're right, you, like you by yourself out here? I am. For a minute there, I thought this little one down here was yours. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my, my bottom started twitching a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw the boat, I was really impressed. I had no idea it was going to be that big. It was a huge monster of a thing. Let me show you around. 
But is this like a work in progress? Are you it's, doing it at the moment? It is work in progress. That's why I need need some, some money to complete it. I but, noticed like you've gone out and bought some new chairs straight away, haven't you? I bought <laughs> them for you. Did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go down to my bedroom. Mm. Mm. I had a guided tour of the boat and generally it was sound. There were one and two signs of wear and tear, especially in the toilet. Just needs a good clean up. We've just cleaned it yesterday. Did we? <laughs> When there's another good thing. Well, it's pleasantly surprising down there, really, in terms of its space. I think you can manage getting up these stairs OK, can't you? So this is where it all goes on, is it? It is, yes. Where shall we go? Barbados? Brixton's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Just a little half a mile jaunt would be quite nice. I don't want to go too yeah. far. OK, fine. What are you actually looking for in terms of capital? I, I need £100,000. £70,000 for my logistic company, and then I need the extra £25 to £30,000 to finish off this boat. Uh, 100 grand's a lot of money, but look, we're going to get the thing fired up and let's get it out there, shall we? You Absolutely. Got... I can't wait, Captain. <laughs> Captain Pugwash to you. I got it. He's... You're looking good, Mark. You've done I... this before, mate. I used to drive tanks. What's those jet skis there? What, what jet skis? No, don't. You're scaring me. He's <laughs> motoring yeah, now. We are mind if I have a little... <laughs> mind your hat. <laughs> now that we're on the open seas, mate, you can really get a feel for it. I mean, it's, it it's, feels very smooth, doesn't it? I mean, It is. We could be out at sea ourselves, if you wanted to, for the next three weeks without any problems. Would uh, you like to have that? I'd have a few problems <laughs> if I was out at sea with you for three weeks, I think. <laughs> I'd worry about myself, I'd actually. I'd go stir crazy. <laughs> yes. By the time I'd got out onto the open seas, we'd had a few drinks and I'd forgotten that we were actually going there to do some business. I thought it was a bit of a jolly. Let's sing a song. She's motoring along now, isn't she? She is, and the sun is now breaking out on this us. This is what it's all about. It is. I'll tell you what, if I weren't so busy at work, I'd spend half a year here, I think, with you, Mark, floating around in this. It's a nice life, isn't it? Lovely day. A Get sandwich. out with your friends. I wish I had a friend. You got me. Yes, I am pretty desperate. <laughs> well, Mark, I really enjoyed that. That was bloody brilliant. I enjoyed it as well. It's At least we didn't sink. No, we didn't sink. Obviously, mechanically, it seems fine. Absolutely. Um, I've had a good look round with you, and we know the issues that you want to sort out anyway. But well, I need to go back to London now and uh, do some sums. Brilliant. I, I look forward to hearing from you. Cheers, mate. Good to see All you. All the best. Cheers. Bye. This is not an easy one to sort out by any stretch of the imagination. 100 grand is a lot of money. It is a lot of boat, but it needs a lot of work. So we really need to get our figures right in the respect of the value of that boat before we can release funds. Crunching figures is all important for the pawn shop, whether the loan is for £100 or £100,000. Yeah, we'll agree and find a figure for it. I can give you a loan today or tomorrow or something. After some extra research on the black coral statues, jamo has been doing his sums and is now ready to talk to Anita and Henry. I'm just about to call Anita. There is a couple of questions that need to be answered. Either it could change our lives completely or the bubble can burst and we have to start again. So it's like, we don't know. You tried it your room? From 2 o'clock in the morning, no sleep. <laughs> Anita and her husband, they're, they're a fantastic couple. Hopefully we'll get some positive news from her. It's all kind of building up, your stomach's churning and you've got butterflies and, you know, no, this could change everything or maybe not. Here we go. Hello? Oh, hi, is that Anita? Speaking. Hi, Anita, it's Jamie at Prestige. Hi, yeah. Hi, how are you? Oh, gosh, we're just waiting for your call, a bit nervous. Well, there's a couple of questions that I just need to ask you in regards to the coral. Was it something that came to you via Cuba or was it something that was already in the country? Henry got it from his great-grandfather from Cuba. Because we live here, it was taken as an ornament. One critical aspect is the potential CITES. I'm not sure if it's something you're aware of. And CITES is a bit like a passport for... Authenticity of the item. Is it something you have? No, because we acquired it, obviously, through inheritance. It was never something we've looked into don't have any documents by the sounds of it. No, there's no it's document prior to documentation and stuff. Bearing all that in mind, um, the sort of figures that I've been advised upon with the CITES, you're looking at 
uh, unfortunately, sort of figures of around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. I'm not sure how you feel about that news. It is very disappointing for us. I think it would be worth one day sort of looking into the CITES. For no, you. but at least we know now, and now we know if we can get the documentation and the paperwork for it. But it's lovely to speak to you. I'm sorry for the negative news. They're here safe for you. I mean, obviously, at your convenience when you want to pop in to collect them. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. So I said it's not the end of the world, we just have to... Keep positive and carry on. Yeah. And do other things. It's one of the hardest things that, you know, we all have to sort of deal with, is to tell our customer some sort of news on the potential value and perhaps it not being what they hoped it to be. But we had the value that's a lot higher, but if it had the paperwork that we need, which we didn't know we had to get, we'd have a bit more of a value. Well, so it's important we get the paperwork for it. As soon as we knew that the commercial value, let alone the loanability value, was going to be lower than what they expected, it's always going to be something, you know, you're going to be banging your head against the wall. It's a real toughie. With the London shop launch looming, it's been a busy and stressful month for the pawn shop. We are so busy. And we're taking the flat for it. Can I just ask you to hold one sec? And after spending two days interviewing candidates to work in the new store in Hatton Garden, James and Joe have drawn up a short list. Cara. Lee, Charmy and Mark. And have come up with a simple and easy to remember system for choosing their favourites. We'll put a no for now next to him. All yeah? right. What do you think yes. about Lee? So Lee is my first choice. And I think she's going to be a grafter. Trying to come to a decision on who we were going to hire was an absolute nightmare. Ross is a no. Ross, I can't give up on him yet. I'm telling you, he would be a good prestige Do person. That we were deliberating for far too long. Ross's experience. What if he was working with someone like Lee? How would you feel then? That's getting. Are you for real? This is not the way you do things. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We know where we are. We ain't got enough pointy down mouths. Listen, Ross is going to have to point down. You're basing it on how many downward facing mouths are on the graph. Yes. All right. We kind of did end up meeting in the middle, but it really took a long time. By you know tomorrow what? morning, we need to phone some of these um, candidates and get them on board because yeah. we need them to give their notices in. Oh, my God, so much. I need them training yet last week. Oh, my God, I know. Having carried out extensive research into the provenance of the golden rat, Monica is about to call Joe. Do you fancy a cup of tea? Please, two tea bags. Big day today when I'll finally get to know about my beloved rat. I would hope for 4,000. I think if it were any less, I might be disappointed. The main thing is that we get an eternity ring. That was the whole idea. She's such a sweet lady and, and uh, the whole story is really nice. Hello. Hi, is that Joe? It is. Hello, it's Monica calling from Prestige. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I'm nervous. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> How much you were looking for? Well, if it's only 2,000, I'm, I'm just prepared to keep hold of it. But if it was four, that would be wonderful. Anything more than that is just a bonus. I don't have great news. It's nothing close to what you were looking for. All ah, right. It's not even a 1,000 pounds. On its own. It came to, like, 500 pounds. Really? I'm so sorry to giving you bad news. I will definitely let you know uh, all the information from Cartier. It's just a question of time. Well, thank you for all your help. Bye-bye. OK, bye-bye. Oh, this is not even worth a thousand. So we'll just have it back, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not quite sure I would have felt letting it go, to, if I'm really honest. 
Cecilia always wore it, um, but she did have a wicked sense of humour. So maybe I should always wear it. Well, why not? No. Because it does scratch my cleavage, if I'm honest. <laughs> Joe and Daddy can see that keeping their friends pendant is for the best. But for Tracy, holding on to her late husband's jag really isn't an option. We're here to see James. She has come to the Weybridge shop, hoping the Mark II Jaguar gets her the £10,000 she needs to put a deposit down on their dream holiday home. Tracy, how are you? I'm good, nice Come in and you squeeze in there if you can. We will. Basically, we've uh, had a look at the car and there are a lot of positives with it. It's obviously been cared for at some point and it's had a quite a bit of restoration, I would imagine, over the years. It's a good colour to have one in. Uh, that particular blue is very desirable. Considering you know, it's been sitting around, it's in good order. But there are some negatives with it. You would need to re-chrome the bumpers, do some of the paintwork, maybe not the entire car, but both sides of the car would need painting. And I think it would just need some general tidying. I understand you want to sell, don't you? Ideally, I'd like to sell it. I mean, I can't keep hold of it anymore in the garage. It was really difficult when I was sitting opposite Tracy and she had her two children with her. I knew exactly what was going through their minds and I knew that they were probably thinking of their father when we were talking about his car. I mean, if you wanted to get those bits and pieces done, we would be happy to return you the £10,000. How much is that kind of...? At least a couple of grand probably on it, maybe two and a half. So, um, you know, the offer's there and it's really up to you. What do you reckon, guys? We do need the fact that you've offered me 10,000 is amazing because that's what I need. The fact that you want me to do stuff to it isn't so amazing because I don't have the money to do that with because no. the 10 grand's going straight off. So I don't know the best option to take, to be honest. Is it possible to get 10 and then sell it at seven and I give you back the three? That's not going to work. From a loan point of view, we will lend you a percentage of the of the value. And what would you give me as a loan? We could give you five. You could give me five? Yeah, I would give you five for it. I don't know what the best option is. Um, I could take five for now. You keep hold of the car and I find a buyer and we can take it from there maybe? Definitely. Is that an option? That's an option. Can we do that then? We can do that, Tracy. James, <laughs> you're my saviour. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad it's turned out positive in the end. Yeah, I think that works, no? OK, Tracy. Cool. Thanks for coming. Thank Cheers, kids. Thank Thanks for coming in. Hope it wasn't too bad a journey for you. <laughs> to have them sitting there, and they're all hoping for this 10 grand figure, and you could see the pain, and I could feel it coming across the table, and it wasn't the most enjoyable experience, I must admit, that I've had. I did uh, breathe a sigh of relief when she left and took the offer because she seemed to sort of cheer up a little bit. I've been offered five, which is halfway to what I need. I'll do a car boot sale. I'll do something. I don't know, I'll find a way. I'll find a way of doing it. The Croatian dream is, is still alive. It, we'll do it. It's going to happen. in the UK in his sorry home, Mark is waiting to hear whether his friend is going to lend him £100,000 against the value of his luxury yacht. Luke, could you possibly help me and take some of these in for me, please? Yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah, this has been a tough task for James, who doesn't want to let his friendship get in the way of good business. It is difficult when you're dealing with mates because, you know, you don't want to disappoint them. And unfortunately, we can't bend the rules or um, you know, do any special favours. It is about the asset, and if the value is not in the asset, we won't be able to do the loan. I could be lumbered with a boat that I potentially may have to put to sell, so I don't want to overlend and find that I lose money in another seven months' time. There is quite a lot riding on, on this because I have actually just ordered three vans, and I'm hoping that um, James will lend, lend me the money. If not, I have to use Plan B. My, my plan B is that I'll go and rob, rob a bank. I think we're in a position now to put a number to Mark um, and hope 
and pray that we haven't missed anything. I think we've got it all covered. Mark, hi, it's James here from Prestige. How are you? I'm very well, James. Very nice to hear from you. How are you? I'm good. Are you all right? Yes, I'm back in the UK in the cold, etc. When did you get in? Uh, I arrived about two hours ago. Well, look, we've been doing some figures and we've um, been back consulting uh, our experts. Well, I think generally, I mean, you've done the back-breaking stuff and, uh, and we've seen all the paperwork um, to substantiate that. Um, James, please get to the point, please. Well, look, Mark, I'm happy to present you with an offer of a hundred grand. Whoa! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can change this crap wine to um, champagne now. Yeah, you're gonna t you're gonna pop open a bottle of champagne, are you? I am going to open a bottle of champagne. Thank you. It was really great talking to Mark and being able to tell him that he'd actually got the money required. Thank you very much indeed. Can you email me all the contracts and I will sign them whilst I'm in the UK? I'll get it all over to you, mate. It's uh, It's been a pleasure. I hope um, it all goes well for you. But um, and maybe we can meet up for a drink later if you're about. Absolutely. OK, thank you so much for that, James. I really feel relieved. Thank you. No problem, mate. I'll send it all over. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Sarah, Luke, Ella. Where are you? Got some great news. OK. <laughs> Just had a, the call from um, James. Yes. And mm -hmm. he's prepared to lend us the hundred thousand pounds to help the business. Wow. <laughs> hey, I'm really happy that we've managed to seal this deal and get the uh, the deal closed. And he's over the moon. I'm happy. We've got another loan out for a hundred grand. It's a big one for us, and it's just another fine day at the office. Cheers, everyone. I'm really pleased, and thank you, James for um, handing us the money. Cheers, cheers. Well done. Thank you. Sometimes you come across clients that really, really need the money. You just can't help them. And other times you come across people that don't need the money so much. And unfortunately, <laughs> you are able to do a deal. But it's not always fair, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles.